Okay, so quick sort. It's another sorting algorithm. Um, so we have here an unsorted array and we want to sort it using quick sort. Now the way quick sort works is it uses a divide and conquer approach. Um, so a recursive approach. And what we need to think about when we're looking at quick sort is pivot. Now what a pivot will do is it will allow the array to be partitioned into two separate groups. So what we can do with this one is any value in here can be a pivot. Let's just choose the last value. Now what we can do is we can split this array into two different arrays. So we can say left array and right array. Everything that is less than this value, everything that is less than the pivot goes into the left array and everything that is greater goes into the right array. So three, two, four, one goes in there and the six goes in here. And now we have two separate arrays where we can carry out this process over and over again. One thing to take into consideration here is if this, for example, this pivot here is one, what we're going to have is we're going to have everything within the right array. And if it's say eight, everything's going to be in the left array. So we need to account for that. So in order to make sure that this recursive call through left array and right array works correctly, we need to have some if conditional logic. So let's just write that out now because what we want to be doing at the bottom of our stack after we've divided each one of these is we want to return back up the stack. Let me just show you what I mean by that. So this is going to be divided again. So we're going to have a left array, right array. This is the pivot. Everything less than is going in the left array. Everything greater than is going in the right array. So we're going to have this. There's nothing in this left array now. So we can carry on with this. Let's just change the color. We have left array, right array. Four is the pivot and everything is less than. So we have three and two. So nothing in the right array here. One more time. We have left array, right array. Two is the pivot. Three is greater than, so three goes in there. So nothing in the left array. So now that we've got to the bottom of this stack, we need to say, if say the length of the array is equal or less than one, we just need to return that value. So we're gonna be returning this upwards, okay? Now, here's where the logic comes in. If both left array and right array have values in, so in this case, they don't. So what we'll do is we'll say, if left array has a value in, but right array doesn't, and if right array has a value in, but left doesn't, so that's the one that we're concerned with here. If this is true, then what we need to return up is the pivot, which is two and three. So we're already returning that up, but we need to concatenate those two values. So we're gonna be returning up two and three from this value, right? Because what we want to do is we want to return the pivot and the right array value. Okay, so that goes back up to this level. So we have two and three here. I know this is a bit messy, but just bear with me. Now here we have a left array and no right array. And in this case, we have a left array. So we want to be returning that in order. And the way we do that is we return left array as well as the pivot. So pivot goes in there as well. So this will be returned up to this level and it'll look something like this. We'll have two, three, and four. And now we've got this. So there's nothing in the left array, but there is something in the right array. What we do is we return the pivot, which is here, plus the right array, which is here. So this goes up to this level, and it'll look something like this. Now we're at this level, okay? So we're at this level. So we have something in the left array, we have something in the right array. So we need to do something else for this one. Now in order to make sure that this it's all returned correctly. What we need to do is we need to return the left array, the pivot, and the right array. So here we have one, two, three, four. We need to return this upwards with the pivot and the right array. So that would be one, two, three, 
4, pivot, which is 5, from here, and the right array, which is 6. And that is the divide and conquer approach. You go down the recursive tree, splitting into two values at each stage, and then solving once you get to the bottom and returning those values based on the conditions that you provide here. Okay, so time complexity for this algorithm. What we have is we have an array which we need to loop through the entirety of. So we know for a fact that it's going to be n. And at each stage of the divide and conquer approach, we are splitting this array into two. And that just means that it is going to be log of n. In terms of space, we have O of n plus m, where we have these arrays as auxiliary data structures that are used in the divide and conquer approach to get the solution. Okay, so here we are on the code editor. We have a function quick sort which takes in an array of numbers, and we're just console logging the quick sort function being fired with the array we used in our example. So, firstly, if r dot length is less than or equal to one what we can do is we can return r and what that will do is it will allow us to return back up the recursive call stack and now we need to define a pivot so pivot as we said can be equal to anything but we're going to choose the last value within the array we need to define left array and we need to define right array Great. So now that we've done that, we need to add the values to the left array or the right array based on whether they're greater than or smaller than the pivot. Oops, call it nums. It's r. If r at i is less than pivot, what we can do is we can add it to the left array. So left array dot push r at i. Else what we'll do is we'll push it into the right array. Great. So now that we've done that, we can carry out the divide and conquer approach. So as we mentioned in the example, there are three kind of conditions that we need to abide by. And that's if left r dot length greater than zero and right r dot length is also greater than zero carry out something else if if left r is greater than zero if left r is greater than zero carry out something else else do something else so in here we need to return the left array values plus the pivot plus the right array values. But here we need to take into consideration the recursive call. And this is where it gets interesting. So quick sort left array. Now what this is going to do is it's gonna create that recursive functionality which takes in the left array and it's going to order the left arrays values. And we spread this value because we don't want nested arrays, okay? So we also need to add the pivot and we also need to do the same for the right side to the right array. Great, so if there's only values in the left array, there's no point in carrying out the recursive call on the right array. So all we need to do is quick sort left array and the pivot and return that. And likewise for the right array, there's no point in doing the recursive call on the left array. So we just return the pivot plus quick sort right array. And there you have it. We have a sorted array using quick sort.